Um, Stephen Howard for Keep Our Assets Canterbury. Māori ora ki te whenua, māori ora ki ngā tangata e hui mai nei tenei rā. I ngā mati hari ki tō koutou kainga tuturu, hari, hari, hari. Ta hunga mati ki te hunga mati, ta hunga ora ki te hunga ora. Hello, we are representatives of Koa Canterbury, which is a group of various parties, organisations and individuals who support the retention of those few assets left in public or collective ownership. And assets both tangible and intangible are mostly, and most importantly, democracy. I'm Stephen Howard. With me is Dot Lovell Smith and Murray Horton. I think you all know us. Good afternoon. In making decisions in Ototahi, or the People's Republic of Christchurch, as it used to be known, the stakeholders are the people of Christchurch, not the rugby union, although some members of the rugby union could be stakeholders by virtue of being citizens of Ototahi. Not the Chamber of Commerce, although members of the Chamber of Commerce may be stakeholders by virtue of being citizens of Christchurch, and certainly not Treasury, although employees of Treasury may be stakeholders by virtue of being citizens of our city. Our city still has major challenges in re-establishing all infrastructure after the quakes. It's our strong belief that a democratically run city, which owns most of its own service delivering agencies, has a real resilience. Not only are we still recovering from the earthquakes, but there is an increasing challenge being forecast, especially in the eastern suburbs. I see Jamie's dumping his Brighton assets very wise. But we need policies that protect all. Sorry? Jamie. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I think you mean Anthony, by yes. the way. Is it? Oh, I've got the wrong, wrong landlord, sorry. Anthony. <laughs> this week we have been hearing very strong probability of insurance becoming a thing of the past for people in low-lying areas, such as New Brighton. Cranford Street, I don't know about. Um, the insurance co company actuaries have their fingers on reality. One very clear implication of this is the need for secure, decent and, re and decently priced rentals supplied by both the central and city governments is only going to increase. The city needs to increase its commitment to public rental housing and to improving existing homes and to build far more pepper-potted and more salubrious suburbs and to the west. I see in Saturday's press that Chris McKenzie is quoted as saying, the right people were not in the room. And that led to decisions being made which were not in the interest of the people of Otatahi. This is during the um, Bob Parker's negotiations with Jerry Brownlee. The problem isn't really who was in the room, but that some people were in the room while the rest of us were outside in the cold. The council will not have the benefit of the wisdom of crowds that comes with open and transparent democracy if the people are out of the room. That leads to skewed decisions, decisions that don't make sense to the people of Christchurch. Surveys show that, that the people would see the horizontal infrastructure as being a priority, and the stadium for the rugby union, for instance, and other anchor projects, as being a nice to have, but at a later date. Let me congratulate the council on Turanga, a service for all Otatahi people, and very well used, often full in fact unlike the rugby unions park at the old showgrounds. While the people are shut out of the room, Brownlee through Sarah forced the agreement that only patched the infra horizontal infrastructure while committing the people of Christchurch to a lot of costs. I see in the same article that I was referring to before, an unelected council employee saying 
that the horizontal infrastructure patching is working. Oh, really? We see the council reporting major leaks in its water supply network. Is that due to the patching rather than bringing it up to standard? Almost everyone in the city can tell stories of the frustration of not being sure which route to take because of the horizontal infrastructure works, are still forcing expensive detours, and looking at a map of unscheduled breaks in the water supply is interesting. I looked at that map on Tuesday, I think it was, because my father's water suddenly disappeared on Tuesday morning. A main had broken in Norton's Road. The trouble is that we, uh, we can be paying for these behind the closed doors decisions for years. Who thought it was a good idea to guarantee a bike playground for the better off to the tune of five million? Were the people informed of that? Were they aware that the company guaranteed, <coughs> the country that we guaranteed had presented the playground as a unique attraction in New Zealand and then went off and built another in Pararua with no council spending? We see the Northern Expressway, and we saw that in the last submission, which the people of Christchurch have rejected many times, being bulldozed through. A decision of transit, and a decision which doesn't really benefit the city, but leaves New Zealand with a stranded asset in the form of a motorway no one will use once we become serious about climate change. And it's generating costs in this budget. I see, what was it, $150 million on dealing with the... Cranford area to deal with the end of the motorway? 57 million was a figure, I can't remember the figure. We see the northern... Ex <coughs> the point was that the decision to build that was not made in public by the people or the people's representatives, but by an agency that acts at arm's length from the people. The people of Christchurch see a large cost in dealing with the flow into St Albans and Cranford Street, while the people, well, people are further discouraged from using existing rail corridor and public transport. The southern motorway is an even worse misuse of public funds. And that brings us to the public transport. We completely agree with Leanne, there you go Leanne, about the councils rather than ECAN running the public transport. But we want to go further and stop the stupidity of tendering private companies to deliver services. All public transport should be free and delivered by publicly owned agencies. And I know you've had a delegation by a, a public transport engineer giving you an example of a German experience of something like that. <coughs> we, when, um, when they have a tendering model, we see how it gets out of hand. We've seen problems in Wellington and Auckland recently. Time for the council to support Leon's push to have central government change the law to allow it. But why put that on the agenda? Of, why not put that on the agenda of global settlement? We keep seeing reports of Aldi being forced to walk considerable distances because of the decision made by ECAN. And I'll let Don Dot have a few words here. Do I have to push this on? No, just speaking up. Oh, g'day. Um, kia ora, I'm Dot, um, and I'm a bus user. Um, I just want to tell a wee story about the <coughs> other night when I decided to um, leave a meeting at 8.30 so I could catch a 9 o'clock bus back to Hornby. Um, to get to Hay Hay, I have to at night, I change buses in Rickerton because I don't want to walk from Hornby to Hay Hay across the um, Kyle Park in the dark. Um, so I have to wait in Rickerton for the Hay Hay bus. So I thought to myself, oh, that's OK. We've got a nice little waiting room there in Rickerton Road. So I went to the little waiting room, sat there for about 10 minutes, and then the, the security guard said, sorry, we've been told to close this at 9.30. Everybody out. So I found myself sitting, not in a nice little waiting room for 20 minutes, but perched on the edge of the um, farmer's window ledge, and there was at least five other women there waiting with me for buses. And it was a very cold, very uncomfortable, rather scary experience. And I'm actually quite annoyed that the suburban buses like the Hay Hay bus only at night only run every half hour and force us to do that sort of wait in dark streets and it's not safe, especially for women. I mean, most of the other women had been shopping at Pack and Save. They were burdened down with huge bags of shopping. But there we all had to perch like birds on the windowsills. So, yeah, just a little story to show how uncomfortable buses can be in Christchurch when they should be a service that works for everybody. And a, a sole supplier owned and controlled by the council would be a big improvement. 
Let's see the council stick to its guns of being the People's Republic of Christchurch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dion. Yeah, just, I, I noted in your uh, submission something interesting that you mentioned here, and I just wanted to get some clarification from you around the uh, central bank and possible financial dangers comment. And you oh. say it could imply lower interest rates, which is a potential if the OCR goes down. Um, but it could imply um, the council and the need for spend to stimulate the economy. Are you saying we need to spend more to stimulate or to not spend? Look, I'm not a, I'm not a forecaster, and economists have a very bad record when they make forecasts. So the Reserve Bank is obviously foreseeing some sort of troubled economic waters because they are talking about the drop in the OCR, which should lead to a drop in interest rates, which allows the council to spend more. So that's what you're saying? Okay, well, cool. it, But that might not happen. Yeah, I'm, I was just trying yeah. to understand what yeah. you meant by the, by the phrase. No, thank you. Cheers. Very good. Um, right. Look, thank you very much for your submission. Thank you for your comments about public transport too. Fully integrated public transport system, get people on buses and out of cars, but be great. <laughs> and on the railway if we can, Leanne. Yes, well, yes. yes. Thank you. There are, there are challenges with that too. Sorry? <laughs>